Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Magic Pill Monday. In this series, we will take a look at performance and health boosting supplements. And we will see if they are actually worth taking based on science or if they are a waste of money. I will focus mainly on fairly unknown supplements because many people already talk about popular supplements such as creatine or magnesium and you can find a lot of information on it online by yourself. But supplements like this one, Hubrazine A, can be very interesting for some people but most people haven't heard about it at all and there's not a lot of information on it. So let's dive into it. So what is Hubrazine A actually? It is a molecule that is found in a plant called Chinese club moss. And it's mostly used as a nootropic, meaning that it's meant to improve one's ability to study, to focus, etc. Now, how does it do this? Well, in the brain, we have a neuromodular modulator called acetylcholine. This neuromodulator is involved in many of the processes around focus, memory, and learning capacity. There's also an enzyme in the brain called acetylcholinesterase. And this enzyme will basically cut up this acetylcholine molecule into smaller pieces and therefore it loses its effectiveness as acetylcholine. Now what hubrazine A does is it is known as an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, meaning it reduces the amount of enzymes that is around. And as a result, there will be more acetylcholine left in the brain and it will stay around there for longer. So you would expect to see an increase in focus, memory and learning capacity as a result. Now it's also sometimes used as a pre-workout ingredient simply because we also want an increase in focus when we are in the gym, but also because acetylcholine is involved in muscle contraction. So it can also be interesting in that regard. Now it has been studied for both of these benefits, but unfortunately the results are mixed. So here, for example, we have a study that was looking at healthy students and the possibility of hubrazine A to enhance memory and learning. And in this case, we, they saw an increase in memory and learning capacity. So this is a positive outcome. However, here we have another study in healthy adults. And the conclusion from this study was that neither compound and they were looking at hubrazine A and another compound, improved neurobehavioral performance. So here, they didn't see any effect in healthy adults. This study, they looked at hubrazine A as part of a pre-workout supplement. And they say here, we hypothesize that acute consumption of hubrazine A would improve cognitive function during exercise. But the conclusion unfortunately was that hubrazine A does not enhance cognitive function during exercise, despite it being marketed as a cognitive enhancer. So what we can see from the research is that the results are mixed and we are not sure if it's actually working for healthy adults or not. But there's not very much science around, so maybe in the future we will see more science showing that it does have an effect, but for now the results are mixed. Now Hupersine A also has other beneficial properties, namely it's neuroprotective, so it's known to protect the brain and the nerves, and it's also known to be involved in neurogenesis, the growth of new nerves. And here are just some quotes from different research, which I will link in the description. Producing a potent anti-inflammatory response. So it is very anti-inflammatory in the brain. 
It preserves mitochondrial structure and is involved in iron metabolism in the brain. And it can also increase nerve growth factor. Now, all these components are very interesting. And as a result of these findings, Hubrisine A has been researched a lot as a prevention or a treatment for Alzheimer's and dementia. And here it has been found to be quite effective. As you can see in this study from 2014, Huperzine A is a well-tolerated drug that would, could significantly improve cognitive performance in patients with Alzheimer's disease or vascular dementia. So the scientific verdict on Huperzine A as a prevention or treatment for Alzheimer's and dementia is very positive. Now, what are some of the downsides and effects you should take into account if you want to take Huperzine A? First of all, Huperzine A has a long half-life, meaning that it will take a long time for Huperzine A to clear out of your body. It can actually take up to two days to fully clear out your body. Therefore, people typically advise not to take Huperzine A every day, but rather once every two days. And the reason is that if you take it every day, Huperzine A will build up in your body and you might get an acetylcholine overdose. Basically so much acetylcholine build up in your body because there's no enzyme to break it down. And having this overdose can have a few negative side effects. And I just listed a couple here like nausea, diarrhea, insomnia, dizziness, etc. Now the same can be achieved, this acetylcholine overdose, if you combine Huperzine A with an acetylcholine booster, such as alpha-GPC or CDP-choline. So what these supplements will do is they will increase the amount of acetylcholine in your brain. And if you take Huberzine A alongside of it, that will of course decrease the amount of enzyme that is there. And as a result, you will have lots of acetylcholine buildup in your body, which could have negative effects. Now, finally, people with asthma and heart disease should be careful with Huberzine A. And the reason is that Huberzine A can increase mucus in the lungs and it can make it more difficult to breathe. And if you have asthma, that can be a little bit dangerous. And also Huberzine A has been known to be able to lower heart rate, which can be dangerous for some people with heart disease. Now, how about dosage and quality? So dosage typically is 50 to 200 micrograms when taken daily. But like I said, it might be wise not to take it daily. And if you do take it daily, probably wise to stick to the lower end of the dosage range. Furthermore, when you start buying the supplement, make sure you actually get Huberzine A and not the Hubertia serrata extract. Because the plant extracts, you never really know how pure they are, how much Huperzine A is really in there. So just get a standardized Huperzine A supplement instead. And also be careful with powders because they ha usually have different strengths. They might have 1% Huperzine A or 0.1%. And it's quite easy to mess up the dosage and I have read some stories from people that accidentally were overdosing on Huberzine A. And even though that is not necessarily life threatening, it can be a very unpleasant experience. So for personal experience, I have taken Huberzine A as part of a pre-workout supplement. And I did feel that every time I took that supplement, I had um, increased focus during the workout and I didn't have that increased focus when I did not take the supplement. So it seems to be working for me. However, I also found that I got this lung mucus. It was more difficult for me to breathe and I had some more troubles with my lungs. If I take this supplement, it might just be coincidence, you know, or placebo, but this is my personal experience. Now for others, 
online or people that I've spoken in real life, they said that most of the time this was a great supplement for them. They felt an immense improvement in focus, memory and learning. However, if they were using it daily or were using it at very high dosages or combining it with other acetylcholine boosters, they tended to have bad outcomes. They tend to show some of those signs of acetylcholine overload, which were very unpleasant for them. Now, some people also take this supplement, Hubrisine A, to induce very vivid dreams. Apparently, this works very well. So if, if this is something you find interesting, it's worth experimenting with Hubrisine A and see if your dreams become more colorful, more interesting, and you dream more often. And finally, there are some people that simply cannot tolerate Hubrisine A at all. And this is just because we are all different genetically. Our neuro neurochemistry is slightly different. We're all eating different diets, etc. So some people might simply be very sensitive for this compound, or they might already have a lot of acetylcholine in the brain. Their neurochemistry is simply wired that way. And by taking this supplement, they just push themselves over the ash edge and they get these side effects of having too much acetylcholine. So final verdict for the supplement, I took it personally and I kind of liked it and lots of other people seem to get benefits of it. However, the science, especially on healthy adults is mixed and you have to be careful with dosaging. Some people get negative side effects so for that combined body of evidence, I would say a seven minus. It's not the greatest supplement out there to take, although it's worth an experiment. Now, when it comes to prevention or supportive treatment for Alzheimer and dementia, however, I think this supplement shows a lot of promise. If I were to have a family member or I knew somebody, that was having Alzheimer's or dementia, I would most certainly um, recommend this product to them. And I think if you're older or if these diseases are in your family, it may be interesting to look at this supplement as sort of a preventative treatment. So for that use case, I would give this supplement a nine. So, that was Hyperzine A. I hope you liked my analysis. And if you like this sort of videos, leave me a like and subscribe. If there's a specific supplement you want me to cover, just comment uh, below the video. Or if there's a question you have about this supplement, leave a comment as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will put all the studies that I talked about in the description. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.